It was 2016. I had three pieces of ID on me. Was not allowed to vote. And I was devastated. I vote every year. Don't you have a social security card too? Yeah, I had my social security card. I had my food stamp card. I had my to-go card with my picture. It don't make sense. Everybody can't get no photo ID. That mean they can't vote. We supposed to move on, not go back. We supposed to be allowed to vote. I don't care what they say. I speak tonight for the dignity of man and the destiny of democracy. This bill will strike down restrictions to voting in all elections. Each of us has a moral responsibility if we are of voting age to participate in that decision. Young people are fired up about the 2008 election. A historic turnout among the nation's largest minority voting group. 11 o'clock on the East Coast, we can report history. Barack Obama is projected to be the next president of the United States of America. Several new voting laws recently enacted in the United States. From barring early voting to requiring people to provide government-issued photo identification, some voters are concerned that one of America's most fundamental rights is under attack. This photo ID law in Wisconsin says, you don't have what you need, you're not invited. This democracy, this isn't for you. You know, we talk about time and time again that more people should vote. Instead, what they're trying to do here in Kansas is make it more difficult. When it comes to a record on disenfranchising American citizens, Florida has that record hands down. You're talking about keeping tens, if not hundreds of thousands of legal voters from being able to cast their vote. In 2016, in those presidential elections and the primary before it, that was the first time that voters had to show an ID. So when you think of this law and that strict list of IDs, you make no mistake that this law is uniquely curated to stop specific people from voting. And with 2018 happening now, we have a lot of work to do. The truth is, is that it is difficult to get an ID in Wisconsin. This is Gladys Harris. This was the first time in her life that her vote did not count. She's pictured here with her Milwaukee County government-issued bus pass, but that wouldn't get her a ballot counted in Wisconsin. Fred Lydell, Fred is 99. The poll workers recognized him by face, but he didn't have the ID he needed. Here's Ruby, she had been denied an ID, never had a birth certificate. This is Caudell. On his birth certificate, said Clardell. Andrea, Anthony, another Milwaukee voter. Uh, so this is Sundaria. This is Steve Passowitz. Wisconsin Republican Governor Scott Walker signed the voter ID law. We now require a photo ID to vote in this state. This is the first time testifying. 
I'm, I'm going up to uh, tell the court about my experience. I think I literally am the most prototypical voter that you can ask for, and, you know, I, I wasn't allowed to vote. You know, when I, I think about a birth certificate, well, that's easy for me to get. And if they'd asked me, I could have provided it. But not everybody's in the same situation as myself. You know, I shouldn't have to sue the Secretary of State in order to be able to vote. I heard this story about how many tens of thousands of Kansas citizens were not put on the voter rolls because of this proof of citizenship requirement. And I thought, I wonder if that's what happened to me. It does appear that aliens do vote in very large numbers, and that's why Kansas has been fighting so hard to stop aliens from registering at the front. But it's a big problem. Again, you don't have any hard physical evidence that this happened. How are you feeling today about court? Very good, thanks. You weren't able to vote? No, I, I was given a provisional ballot um, and later on found out that that was not counted. Oh look, there we are. What does today mean? This case is all about protecting the rights of thousands of Kansans and disproving the lie that there are hordes of non-citizens infiltrating American elections, which has been purveyed by the defendant in this case. He's had the ear of the president on this issue. The president didn't start tweeting about supposedly not losing the popular vote until he met with Kobach. Now he has to prove his assertions in court, and I don't think he's going to be able to do it. We will play a deposition of Chris Kobach, and it will really shine a light on really what is a nationwide plan here to make voting harder. for office. Someone approached me and, and like, Desmond, I guess you cannot wait to vote for your wife. And when they said that, it was like, uh, like someone just stuck a knife in the old wound. I am what we call a returning citizen. And that means that I, at some point in my life, I was convicted of a felony offense. And because I live in the state of Florida, uh, I was permanently stripped of all of my civil rights, which included the ability to vote as well. When you talk about taking away the one identifier of the one true identifier of citizenship from a person, you basically strip them of their citizenship. Three U.S. states deprive convicted felons of the right to vote for the rest of their lives. One of those is Florida, and there are 1.7 estimated million people there who are disenfranchised due to a prior felony conviction. I mean, can you reassure me? Because this affects my life too. I'm going to have to live under the president that you choose. Well, and, and so let me, will this I, make it can, more likely that we get better politicians? I mean, that's, that's a fair question. America is a nation of second chances. 
and that when that door of prison opened, society should do everything it can to help facilitate a successful reentry because it's in society's best interest. You're excommunicated from our society for the rest of your life. The impact that it has is in telling someone that they're no longer a part of society, but yet you want them to pay taxes, but yet you want them to do the right thing. You can't have your cake and eat it too. If you want them to be a contributing member of society, then you have to give them that opportunity to do so. Thank you so much for all the hard work that everyone did. This is terrific news. But I have not finished reading. I've read about the first, I don't know, third of the opinion. Uh, well, it only gets better um, along the way. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is just letting the clients know. Um, um, Tad's already reached out, and I think it would also be great if we sent them all a copy of the opinion um, with just a little note, um, thanking them for everything that they did and just kind of summarizing <laughs> what it means, not, not like an exegesis of it, just that you won. Um, uh, this is what it takes to register to vote in Kansas now, and um, um, well, obviously there will be an appeal, um, and uh, we'll keep them posted on how it goes. Who's gonna let Chris Kobach know? Um, <laughs> um, all right, uh, on the opinion, the substance of it, is there anything? When you talk about voter suppression, where do you see Wisconsin? I mean, how bad is it here? You know, it's a combination of all of these things together, gerrymandering, the mm -hmm. photo ID law. This was really ground zero. Every state's photo ID law is uniquely curated to mm -hmm. affect certain individuals. Like Texas, you can't use a student ID, but yeah. you can use a concealed carry. <laughs> ID. So, you know, <laughs> each, uh, each state is, is uh, very specific. Can you imagine if there wasn't same day voter registration here? Right. With that law, it would be. I don't, know, I don't have the words. It for seems it. like they're they they might be trying to get rid of that next. Oh. I'm so tired. Breaking news, CNN Kansas Secretary of State. Chris Kobach has narrowly won last week's GOP primary for governor after incumbent Jeff Collier conceded Tuesday night. Thirty-five House seats up for grabs tonight, 35 in the Senate, and 36 governorships at stake today as well. Well, let's start uh, by talking about the race for Kansas governor. This is going to be a race that's going to keep us up late. Democrat Laura Kelly, Republican Chris Kobach are the front runners. 
it's been a lot of years to get to this point. It was a relief that, you know, everybody can register to vote easily and we could all go cast our ballots if, if we want to participate in this democracy. Do you want a tight race? Here's one, Wisconsin. Hi, I'm Cheryl. Hi, Robin, this is Allie. Hi, Michelle, from this is Sally. 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 Scott Walker, he is fighting for his political life as the incumbent governor. We have a log of about 500 calls that we've received this month. And now today are getting additional calls of people who want to vote, but maybe don't have the ID, don't have the proof of residency, can't look up their polling location. You're going to need um, to bring in your social security oh, card. Yeah, I was going to see if anyone from your team might be willing to help Oh, wait, out. the number, oh, sorry, sorry, the number I have is the one I'm sorry, talking yes, to on right she's now. Dry, she's finishing up a ride right now. I will so push up information there. on this, and I'll send some more volunteers over. So someone was told they couldn't vote because he was from Minnesota. They said you need to have some sort of physical address and you need to be at a shelter or staying with a friend. Really frustrating. <clears throat> How does the voter ID law deter anyone from voting? I don't get it. We got a nail biter in Florida. One of the ballot initiatives in Florida that has raised uh, a lot of national attention, Amendment 4, which would restore voting rights to felons. This affects over a million potential voters. It's 4.30 on the East Coast, and we're heading into an evening that is guaranteed to be both exciting and historic. Is there a long line in Tosa? There's long lines outside? everywhere. That's outside in Tosa right now? Yeah. Getting reports of a lot of people who thought they were registered but didn't appear on the rolls. So we are 40 minutes till the polls close, and we're still seeing a lot of calls come in, putting out a lot of fires, and still working up until the last minute to make sure people can vote. Our people, are how many students are in line right now? Six minutes. Sure you're wondering about some of these hotly contested amendments on your ballot, but keep in mind, these amendments need 60% of the vote to pass. 13, 12, 11, no. a little. <laughs> And I was just, I, listen, I'm not a uh, political expert, and I don't know how to analyze those numbers, but I just knew that we were above 60% and we need to stay that way. We were above 60 the whole night. It's a great feeling, it really is.
Chris Kobach just went down to defeat in Kansas. Really? We're calling it right now. Chris Kobach uh, losing, and look, it looks like he's losing big to Laura Kelly. The Associated Press has called the Wisconsin governor's race. Yeah, with 99% of precincts reporting, Tony Evers has won the race for governor of Wisconsin. Scott Walker with 48% of the vote. This is a big upset. Suffice it to say that we stand in one of the most momentous periods of human history. And in these days when the problems of the world are gigantic in extent and chaotic in detail, all men of goodwill must make the right decisions of whether we will allow our nation to be relegated to a second-rate power in the world with no moral voice. Whether America will take the high road of justice and peace, and compassion for the poor and underprivileged, or whether this nation will tread the low road of man's inhumanity to man, of injustice, of short-sightedness. Go to the polls and vote your convictions. <laughs> 